Hey, huge shout out to Emily Dummer. Thank you so much for helping me with the art. Catch her Instagram at the end of the video. I had a lot of fun putting this video together and arranging music and all that fun stuff. So, hope you enjoy. Welcome to another episode of Yesterday's Physics Today, where we discuss major players in the progression of the understanding of physics principles and breakthrough inventions which helped in this progression. I am your host, Dr. D. Today, we'll be talking about both a major player and a breakthrough invention, Robert J. Van de Graaff and his Van de Graaff generator, and the mechanics and the history of this breakthrough invention, which led to a greater understanding of high-velocity atomic interaction and the characteristics of electrical charge. Van de Graaff was born on the 20th of December, 1901, in Alaska, but grew up in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. At the University of Alabama, he got his bachelor's degree in 1922 in mechanical engineering and, a year later, at the same institution, his master's degree, also in mechanical engineering. His initial intent was not to become a physicist, but rather, as expressed in both his degrees, an engineer. A year after completing his schooling, however, he felt as though his job as an engineer at the Alabama Power Company wasn't enough for his ambitions, and so he went to study in Paris at Sorbonne. He attended many lectures of Marie Curie and was thoroughly amazed by her and her works, both in the world of chemistry and radiation. This is what turned him to atomic physics and nuclear experimentation. He was chosen as a Rhodes student and subsequently moved to Oxford where he obtained two more degrees in physics while becoming aware of the possibility of the disintegration of nuclei through particle acceleration of incredibly fast speeds. Van de Graaff took inspiration from Lord Kelvin and used a similar concept of gathering charges on the surface to be discharged quickly in a precise location and direction. However, unlike Lord Kelvin's water dropper, which charged drops of water adding to a certain overall charge, Van de Graaff decided to use a belt to carry a charge to a certain surface. When this charge would be discharged in a specified area, it would accelerate atoms into one another, thus disintegrating them. He and his machines soon came to be known as the Atom Smashers. In 1929, Van de Graaff produced his first Van de Graaff generator, which produced over 80,000 volts. Two years later, he produced an improved version, which produced over 1 billion volts. Throughout his life, he continued to research more efficient ways to produce more voltage in order to accurately observe and study high-velocity atomic interaction. Though there were others who had produced particle accelerators, none came close to the effectiveness, efficiency, and power of the Van de Graaff generator. He eventually created an enormous generator producing over 9 million volts. Next, let's turn to the mechanics of the Van de Graaff generator. One way to think of this machine is a giant static electricity generator and holder. Similar to a child walking around on carpet with socks on to shock an unexpected sibling or to charge and then discharge, this machine charges up, holds the charge and then discharges at extremely high amounts of voltage. Now we're all familiar with the Van de Graaff machine to some extent but it isn't used to accelerate particles much anymore because we have found much more effective ways to achieve that. It is mostly used as a demonstration to learn about the transference of electrical energy. But let's take a look inside to understand how it works. The significant parts within the generator itself are two rollers located at the top and bottom which are connected by a belt. Stationed very close to the surface of the belt of both rollers are two metal combs. Outside the generator is an external object, which is specified area of discharge. Now let's look closer at what happens to the bottom roller as it is turned on. Connected to the bottom roller is a small motor which turns the roller and in turn spins the belt, which causes the top roller to spin as well. When the lower Teflon roller, which is more likely to attract electrons, starts moving, it rubs against the belt, creating friction and causing electrons to jump to the roller. Because like charges repel, large amounts of electrons repel other electrons away from the metal tip of the cone. Let's watch again to better understand how this works. As the rollers turn, the tips of the combs are left with a positive charge. The roller is a negative charge, and the belt has a positive charge. This process of electron transfer is called the triboelectric effect. 
Because different charges attract one another, positively charged ions are attracted to the negative roller, but are carried up to the top of the machine by the cotton belt. Now we look at where those positively charged ions go at the top of the generator. As the positively charged belt rubs against the top roller, which is made of aluminum, electrons move to the belt, giving the roller a positive charge. The roller attracts electrons to the tips of the metal comb, which creates an electric field. This electric field strips electrons from the air molecules towards the positive roller. The positive charges go through the length of the comb and spread out evenly across the surface of the sphere. This process is continuous until a grounded object comes close enough to discharge all of the positively charged ions or particles. This could be a rod, part of the machine itself, or a human. During the discharge, atoms move incredibly fast, thus achieving the primary purpose of particle acceleration. Thank you for watching. And just remember, next time you see a big, zappy metal ball, go ahead and touch it. Thank you and good night.